Medieval understanding of projectile motion was based on the ideas of Aristotle. Aristotle thought that projectiles were driven by a force of the air. However, later medieval scholars believed that an internal force, called impetus, was responsible for their motion. Projectiles were thought to move in a straight line until they expended all of their impetus and then fall in a straight line to the ground. During the Renaissance, the resurgence of interest in Greek and Roman culture led to a rebirth of both art and learning. One aspect of this was the re-emergence of the scientific approach to problem solving, which was first conceived of by the ancient Greeks. The growing military importance of cannons in warfare at this time led to greater interest in the study of projectile motion. It was realised from careful observation of projectiles that they followed a curved path rather than moving in two straight lines, as suggested by Aristotle. Following his work on gravity, Galileo became interested in projectile motion. Using the inclined planes that he had used to study gravity, Galileo carried out experiments in which an inked bronze ball was rolled down an inclined plane, then across a horizontal table and off the edge. Where the ball landed on the floor, it left a mark, allowing the horizontal distance travelled by the ball after it rolled off the table to be measured. Galileo varied the horizontal velocity of the ball and the vertical height of the table, and these experiments led him to the understanding that projectiles follow a parabolic trajectory. Based on his experiments, Galileo realised that the motion of a projectile has two components, a constant horizontal velocity and a constant vertical acceleration due to gravity. Galileo, by making precise measurements, was able to determine that the vertical displacement of a falling body was related to the square of time. This relationship is expressed in the equation S displacement equals one half g t squared, where g is acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared, t is time in seconds, and s is displacement in meters. In Galileo's experiments, the projectiles were launched horizontally from a table, and you can see in the diagram that you have a horizontal surface at some height above the ground, with the ball rolling horizontally along it until it comes to the edge. The balls followed a trajectory with a constant horizontal velocity, represented by the green ball at the top, and a constant vertical acceleration, represented by the blue ball, and an initial vertical velocity of zero. The red ball shows the trajectory of the projectile after it rolls off the edge of the table. You can see that it matches the horizontal displacement of the green ball as, in the horizontal direction, the velocity is constant, so it is moving through the same displacement in the same time. In the vertical direction, there is a constant acceleration equal to what it would experience if it was dropped vertically. And you can see that in the vertical direction, the displacement of the red ball is the same as the displacement of the blue ball, which is dropped vertically. The two components, the constant horizontal velocity and the constant vertical acceleration, go together to make up a parabolic trajectory for the projectile. This was the revolutionary thing that Galileo realised, that the trajectory of projectiles is parabolic. For a projectile launched from the ground and landing at the same elevation, the vertical velocity decreases to zero at the top of the projectile's flight, and then accelerates as it falls back to earth, behaving in the same way as a ball thrown vertically upwards. So the vertical displacement of the projectile over time will match that of a ball thrown vertically upwards with the same vertical velocity. In the horizontal direction, the motion of the projectile will match a ball rolling along a frictionless plane with the same horizontal velocity. The trajectory of the projectile is made up of a constant horizontal velocity and a constant vertical acceleration. 
Trajectory As Galileo discovered, projectiles follow a parabolic path. The only force acting on a projectile after its launch is the force due to gravity, and the force due to gravity is directed downwards towards the centre of the Earth. Projectiles have a constant vertical acceleration and a constant horizontal velocity. The motion of a projectile consists of vertical and horizontal components which can be treated separately. There is a well-known thought experiment in physics called the monkey and the gun in which you are asked to imagine a scientist researching monkeys who sees a monkey in a tree that is some distance away and some distance above the ground but within range of their tranquilizer gun. They fire a tranquilizer dart from the gun directly at the monkey. However, the sound of the gun startles the monkey which drops from the tree the instant the gun is fired. And the question is, will the dart hit the monkey? According to Galileo's analysis of projectile motion, the answer is yes, the dart will hit the monkey. Because both the tranquilizer dart and the monkey are subject to the same acceleration due to gravity, so fall an equal distance in an equal time. In the absence of gravity, the dart would travel in a straight line, the aiming line, as shown above. In the time it takes the dart to reach the monkey, it has fallen, relative to this line, the same distance as the monkey has fallen vertically. Summary Galileo was the first person to accurately describe the trajectory of a projectile. Based on experiments, he realized that the motion of a projectile has two components, a constant horizontal velocity and a constant vertical acceleration due to gravity. Projectiles follow a parabolic path, and the only force acting on a projectile after launch is the force due to gravity, which is directed downwards towards the center of the Earth. Thank you for watching.